the enigmatic heroic stones of ancient India and their connection to psychopomps. Commemorative pillars for the deceased were funerary custom followed by many ancient cultures. In India, elaborately carved commemorative stones were erected in honor of a person who died in battle. These stones are called heroic stones and nails. The Irigbalu is in Canada. The hero stones had inscriptions at the bottom narrating the brave acts performed by the deceased and other details about their life. Eight inscriptions suggest that the majority of these stones date from the 4th century BC to 13th century AD, although the custom persisted in some areas until the 18th century. The largest concentration of heroic stones is found in the state of Karnataka, but they are scattered in many adjacent states. These heroic stones tell an intriguing story, not only about the events leading to the person's death, but also about what should happen next. A typical hero stone has three panels. The bottom panel shows the hero engaged in a battle that ultimately led to their death. The battle could have been fought for various reasons, such as fighting for their king, defending their village or community from invaders, protecting the village's cattle from a raid, safeguarding the dignity of women, or fighting against wild beasts. The central panel shows the deceased hero being lifted to the sky by celestial nymphs called Apsaras, who, in many cases, are accompanied by a retinue of celestial musicians called Gandharvas. Apsaras and Gandharvas feature prominently in Indian legends and architecture, and I will discuss them later. The top panel shows that the hero has reached the heaven of Indrayoka, where they are seated on a throne and attended to by the Apsaras. Alternatively, they may have been taken to the heaven of Shiva, of Shiva Loka, where they are shown worshiping a Shiva Lingam stone with folded hands. Perhaps the religious inclinations of a person during their life were used to determine the final destination in the afterlife, Indra Loka or Shiva Loka. Interestingly, in many hero stones, the hero is depicted sitting inside a Vimana or flying vehicle guided towards the sky by Apsaras and Gandharvas. The Vimana ride seems to be a reward, um, a sort of icing on the cake for an extraordinary feat of valor. This is stated in an inscription on, on a hero stone from Saraba, dated 1165 Ad. The Apsaras took the hero in a pushpaka vimana, along with a white umbrella, a water jug, a mirror, a ceremonial arch, a celestial drum, a flying whip, and entered the city of Imaravati to introduce him to the pleasures of Indra Loka. Of course, it seems almost pointless for the soul of the deceased to travel in a Vimana, considering that the soul is free to travel alone, as many near-death experience any accounts reveal. The Vimana element in the story was undoubtedly added later to further glorify the deceased. I had mentioned in a previous article that the Vimanas described in ancient Indian legends behave in a very similar way to how eyewitnesses have described UFOs. This suggests that Gandharvas and Apsaras may be somehow related to the UFO phenomenon. Some hero stones are quite large because they have more than one panel describing each of the three stages, namely the battle, the hero's ascent, and the celestial abode. One of the largest heroic stones found so far measures almost 12 feet in height. Perhaps wealthy leaders and generals had the resources to raise these massive stones carved in their eyes. The stones were always erected in a prominent place where people usually gathered, such as temples, tanks, and lakes, so that people could pay their respects to the hero who sacrificed for them. Now let's move on to the topic of psychopomps. Psychopomps are generally creatures, spirits or angels in many religions whose responsibility is to escort the newly deceased souls from earth to the afterlife. Some of the famous psychopomps from ancient legends are the Norse Valkyries, a multitude of female figures guiding the souls of dead warriors to Odin's Hall Valhalla in Asgard. Hermes, the messenger of the gods, capable of moving swiftly and freely between the mortal and divine worlds, guiding the souls of the departed to the afterlife, and the finely dressed angelic being Diana from Zoroastrian belief, guiding good and pure souls through the Chinve bridge to heaven. Yes, the heroic stones indicate that Apsaras and Gandharvas played the role of psychopomps in the Indian belief system, but who were the Apsaras and Gunharvas, and what do we know about them? In short, 
The Ganharvas were a race of supernatural beings who were skilled musicians. They could carry messages between dimensions and entertain the gods in their celestial court. The Apsaras were their consorts, captivating and sensual beauties who were skilled dancers. Therefore, in Indian architecture, Apsaras and Ganharvas were often depicted flying in the sky or playing various types of musical instruments and dancing in groups. However, there is much more to these intriguing semi-divine beings, which can help us identify their counterparts in other cultures, as we will soon see. In the epic literature of India, such as the Mahabharata, Gandharvas are described as semi-divine beings who can bewilder people by creating illusions. They possess esoteric wisdom and foresight, which is why Gandharva sages acted as teachers to royal princes. They were the guardians of the Soma plant who knew how to prepare the Soma drink so beloved by the gods. This is why Gandharvas play a key role in Vedic fire sacrifices. It is said that Gandharvas are extremely attractive and radiant beings, but they are not entirely human and possess certain animalistic characteristics. For example, Gandharvas may have horns, hairy bodies, and a tail like that of a monkey or a horse. The sage Gandharva Tumburu had the head of a horse, reminiscent of the centaurs of Greek legends. Although it was generally said that Gandharvas and Apsaras were spirits of nature inhabiting forests, streams, and mountains, their real abode is not explicitly indicated. It is likely to be in subterranean regions since, in one of the hymns of the Rig Veda 66.5, Indra is celebrated because he led the Gandharva into the bottomless darkness. Apsaras, on the other hand, had other magical traits besides their beauty and dancing ability. They were said to shapeshift, could become invisible at will, and were associated with fertility and healing. Newlyweeds were blessed by Apsaras and Gandharvas, while infertile women pray to them for children. In Indonesia, Apsaras are called Bidadari from the Sanskrit Vidyadhari, which literally means bearer of knowledge. It refers to a skilled person who can cast spells. Both Gandharvas and Apsaras have powers of illusion and can cast spells that can drive people mad. In other words, they can be both benevolent and malevolent, and you wouldn't want to mess with them. Now, let's draw parallels with other cultures. In European folklore, elves are supernatural beings with magical powers. They are often depicted as youthful-seeming men and women of great beauty living in forests, caves, or wells. They are associated with fertility and prosperity and are considered protectors of nature. Elves in European folklore share some similarities with Ganharvas. Both are magical beings associated with nature and both are known for their musical prowess. Similarly, fairies, especially in Celtic mythology, are often depicted as beautiful, supernatural beings with magical powers. They are associated with nature and are believed to possess the ability to cast spells. The similarity with Apsaras is striking given their magical abilities, association with nature, and their role as guides to the afterlife. In the Indian context, Gandharvas and Apsaras are beings with magical and supernatural attributes, and they are associated with nature, music. In the European context, elves and fairies share similar characteristics, fulfilling comparable roles in their respective mythologies. Interestingly, these parallels extend beyond Europe. In Various world mythologies, there are beings with characteristics similar to Gandharvas and Apsaras. The idea of magical beings with ties to nature, possessing extraordinary powers, and acting as intermediaries between the mortal realm and the supernatural is a recurring motif in global folklore. It, additionally, the concept of psychopomps, beings guiding souls to the afterlife, is not unique to Indian mythology. It is found in diverse cultures worldwide, with different beings serving as guides or guardians of the deceased. The fascinating connection between the heroic stones of ancient India and the role of Apsaras and Gandharvas as psychopomps reveals the intricate tapestry of human beliefs and mythologies. Despite cultural and geographical differences, there universal themes that echo across diverse societies, reflecting shared aspects of the human experience and our collective attempts to understand the mysteries of life, death, and the realms beyond.